Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. Today it's a yacht, it's off St. Moore's, it's going past St. Anthony's head, so let's roll that intro. Let's get cracking. Everybody, welcome back. As I said at the start, we're going to be doing a watercolor of a foul working boat. Now, I love these vessels, they look great cutting through the water down in Cornwall. And this is St. Moore's looking across the bay towards a lovely spit of land called St. Anthony's Head. I think that's what it's called. Please, in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it is, but I've painted it many times in oil and I wanted and felt it would be really nice today to do a watercolor of it for you uh, to enjoy and learn from. So that's what I'm going to get on and do. Now I'm going to be down there very soon. Uh, I work with a gallery called the Waterside Gallery in St. Moore's and the lovely lady in there helped sell my work along with other great artists. So uh, be assured if you're in that area, pop in there and take a look. You'll be so welcome to do so. In the meantime, let's get on. Let's get looking at this watercolor and let's get it done for you. Enjoy it. Catch you the other end. And I want to start looking at the, at the boat itself and looking at where I've got that thing coming through there. A little drop down from there to the back end of the boat, which almost sort of almost level with there. Look at the angle check the angle, bring that down and up. Now the bow is covered with a sheet and that comes up there and just closes off the front of the vessel somewhere about like that. Straighten that up as that comes down to there and that looks about right then. I think we can get away with that. Just take some of that graphite off. It's a little bit heavy and bring it down to where that may end up somewhere like that how am i going to handle this well i'm going to come in with a lot of the lighter values of the greens in here but first off i'm going to put a sky in i think i'm going to put in a little bit of cloud into my sky it's just a little bit too bland from the photo so i'm going to add something into the sky bring it all the way down and if you look at the color of this to this it's not too different this is just maybe a little cooler, a little pinker. So I can bring my color down all the way down if I wish to, change for the sea, put some greens in here, and I can then sort of have this color and let the whole thing dry up before I actually proceed. And then it'd be a simple case, I hope a simple case, mm -hmm, he says, <laughs> to put the rest of the detail in and not make too big a drama out of this whole painting. So Thelosan in blue, very potent blue. It's a great for summer skies, but I do like adding in a bit of cobalt into that. So I'm gonna do just that now, try and make enough of it to do the job and then start applying. Now, I am working on um, Arches 300 pound rough paper. And I'm just gonna come in scratching little bits in, but I'm also going to wet some of this now and try and create one or two disturbances for the water to come down and give me a nice sense of some clouds that are running through the back here. A little uh, bit of magenta, just that tiny touch of magenta. And I'm gonna bring that down now through this hill, but we're gonna have that certainly predominantly uh, setting up our vessel. Bit of magenta. And I want to make a bit of a violety blue color. You can see that there, but I want to make another one. I'll make a blue with a little bit of thalo blue in there. And I want to bring that into our C here. And then coming through this area here with a bit more dark, just to really set that water up. And we can add some more of those sparkles into that. A little bit heavy. I'm just going to gently go over that light. So, okay, so I think we're dry enough to continue with this now. And I'm going to start with putting some of the 
a sort of greenier parts to this in, some of the lighter greens. And we're going to look at the vessel as well and put some darker greens in here. And then we're going to build the whole thing up. But I think that sets the green up quite nice. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that as we come down here and around the area towards the vessel. It gets a little yellower through here. Now this is where you do need to be a little more careful. You've got your boat sails and you do not want to disturb that. You do not want to cut into them. If you do that and you stain the paper, you really have almost got to consider starting again because it's not going to be, it's not going to forgive you. You're not going to get away with it. So now I've got a little bit more land under my foresaw than is showing in the photo. I'm not that worried by that. Let's take that all the way through there. We're going to add a lot more to this, so don't worry too much. If you feel that you want to add a little bit of uh, orange to that at this point, just to suggest that sort of bottom of the water or the bottom of the um, sort of land, as it were, just pop back in and just drop pigment into place. Just drop it in and just adding pigment now that's going to leave all sorts of what would appear awful marks but with additional paint with additional marks once it starts to dry up we can create different looks different feels of rock faces all i'm doing is just dropping in very general colors of warm and cool that we can actually play around with that later on and we see, you can see how it's changing the look of the green to a sort of a, a dullish darkish green I just want to pop in and I want to pop some of that dark in. But I don't want to lose all the other greens that we've got going in. In fact, what I do want to do, just want to pop in a little bit of cad yellow and a bit of cobalt green. Actually, some thalo green will do that. And some cadmium yellow. Not too strong a mix. I just want to pop in, just drop it in. While this is wet, let the two areas fuse because it's suggesting... A little bit of light catching some of these conifers but as that light goes towards the top of the, the trees they're starting to cool off a lot more so those colors and you can see the way that the dampness of the paint is just being able to drop in little bits of pigment just to suggest the extra darks and I can play around with that now now the reason that that really was still quite damp is because I'm using quite heavy paper. 300 pound paper is really a, a sort of a godsend really because although it's not cheap it does have the luxury of allowing you to work on a lot longer than you would may ordinarily, so ordinarily be able to do. Okay, so now let's move on and let's come back down into this area. Again, I'm putting quite a cool color. I'm going to use some ultramarine violet into that green colors. And I'm just going to start drawing some of the crags in here if I can. Just to suggest the sort of shadows within the rocks themselves. Maybe a little flatter and a little bit more light just appearing on the shoreline. But that underpainting has dried off lighter. So it allows me to have this darker in place and to suggest the sort of cracks and crevices on the edge of the rock forms in the shore. So I'm going to build on that, put that one in there, another little bit up through there. And there is a definite dark area of sort of heavy ground there. Now for that I'm going to come in with a bit of indigo and some umber into that indigo. A little indigo, a bit of umber to warm it up. And then I'm just going to drop that into that dampness and let that sort of do its own thing. A few breaks in the grasses, as we can see, little crevices, little cracks where water is constantly running down, creating little fissures in the grasses, uh, running away the edge of the um, dirt, as it were, to the water. And so what I meant to say was, uh, <laughs> come on, um, <laughs> is the water in fissures is running away with the dirt and the grasses leaving bare rock eventually. Sorry. <laughs> oh dear. It's getting late. Never mind. All right. So it's just going to carry on now. I'm going to bring that through here. And again, I'm going to make one or two of these have some sort of connection with the ground. 
or the, the sort of foreground of this area. Just bring one or two down. There's a few taps, undulations, crevices, darks, shadowy areas, whatever they are. Just joining up and linking up some of these areas so that they're not just idle taps in, in the painting. They do have some sort of reason for being there. And one or two out on there because that looks a little bit strange or stuck on its lonesome. But it's not as dark as some of the other areas. I'm going to suggest that there. And I want a soft edge now on that. It's very hard. So I'm going to just dampen the edge of the brush and make that sort of disappear ever so slightly. Okay, now I want to take that out a little bit. I really only want a little tap in there just to suggest that it's in shape. And I'm going to soften this one too. I'm going to put a little bit down through here. And then I want to soften that out by putting almost pure water into that. And let that come down and then dry up. And some CAD red. But that's still way too bright for what we're looking at. So now I'm going to come in with some Venetian red. Which is very terracotta in colour. And let's just see how that looks. Now I think that's not too bad. It may need to go a bit darker, a bit duller, but let's just see where we go with that. And I'm going to use the negative space now, just to run up along the side, along there, all the way up to the bow. But then come this way, I'm going to add a bit of dark to that, as it comes down towards the water. We've given it the sense of the red. I just want to put that in, and we're going to make sort of the crashing of the bow wave and the negative space into the water and I think that will serve us well. Another person and we're going to put those in a little bit of blue just at the back there. Okay that's a quick dash that is a person believe it or not. <laughs> it is a person trust me. Okay let's come in. A bit of blue and a little bit of burnt sienna this time to make a very um, darkish colour but not a black as such. We're going to put that into the bottom of our vessel here. So we're going to come across through there, across the front there. But I'm going to mix some blues out, some ultramarine blue, some cobalt blue, mix it with some of that magenta. But I want to make a bit of a wash now. And what I want to do is just gently scratch it across some of this, like so, and very quickly create little wavelets bit more water, not too much, just allow it to come across and not to completely change the foreground, but just add little bits into it. That there, we see there's just a little too much went in there. But now I'm going to turn the brush on its side and I'm going to make one or two of those marks now a bit more positive, a bit more ultramarine into that. So anyway, I, I jumped off topic a little bit then, but I think pretty much this little painting is done. I've had a lot of fun with it. Um, it doesn't need any more really. It's, it's, I've done what I wanted to do with it. Just going to put a signature down here, out of the way. Hi guys, well I had a lot of fun doing that and I hope you got something from it. There are one or two areas that could have changed. I had a bit of luck here with that little water drip that went in there. And I just felt that the cells could have been a little bluer. They turned out a little grayer than I'd anticipated. But it's not the end of the world. It wasn't that bad. I got a lovely sparkle in the water. I'm really pleased about that. I was thinking about putting that extra dark band across the bottom in the form of a wash. I may still do that. I don't know. But with all that said and done, uh, don't forget. If you want to have a go at this yourself, the reference is always over on my Patreon for you to look at. And um, you can download that to learn from and have a go at this project yourselves in your own time. Not a problem at all. Uh, there's also the line art and the tonal reference as well. And while you're on the Patreon, why not just take a look around? There is so much on offer for you there. It's five or ten dollars a month, that's all. With all that said and done, don't forget, please, I have two youtube channels now one is now dedicated to watercolor this one i also have another one which i just started up which is dedicated to my oil painting so with all that and before i keep gassing on forever on these subjects please take a look 
help support the channels, please subscribe, look at the Patreon, da da da, have I forgotten anything? Probably I have. <laughs> have fun until the next video, take care everybody, I enjoy your company again, all the best for now, stay safe, bye bye. Oh, keep painting. Hi guys and welcome back to the painting channel. Let's crack on, let's get going. That was nice. Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel today. So that uh, you can enjoy that and <laughs> it's opposite St. Moore's and it's a start again. <laughs> How many takes is this? Right, okay. Stop laughing. I've got to stop laughing. <sighs> Serious face. <laughs> Paint it in watercolour tonight. So, with that said and done, let's dive straight in and let's see how we get on. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Hi everybody, welcome back to the painting channel. <clears throat> Today is going to be a watercolour. It's a working boat off of St. Moore's going across. Across? <clears throat> Let's go again. <laughs> oh. Okay, everybody. Well, I lied at the start. We're not going straight into. No. Okay, guys. So, uh, where I no, I'm going to stop that. <clears throat> so, put yourself. In the meantime, stay safe. Keep creating. I'll start all that again because that didn't go down well. So, in the meantime, I would suggest. If you nip on over to my Patreon, there is a... Uh, okay, before I go gassing on... Okay, before I go rambling on too much, let's get on with this watercolour. Let's get it done. Catch you all the other end. We'll have a sum up. Enjoy. <laughs> 